Uh, hey guys, uh, welcome back again. This is Cy from Cywire. Uh, I had a few questions on how to do cloning, uh, as I did for my machine back here, both uh, hydroponically, aeroponically, and also just for your regular, your regular garden and planting. Um, as far as the materials you're going to need, uh, real basic stuff, this is going to be quick. Uh, you do need something to plant them in, typical planters. Now, I end up cutting out a little piece of mine because all I really need is four for this demonstration. Uh, you will also need medium, something to go in that. Um, what I found to work best is the uh, Quick and Easy Seed Starter Mix. This stuff is great. It's like um, peat moss and perlite. Uh, very good, holds the humidity very well, and also allows for the roots to take very quickly. Um, the other medium is obviously rock wool. Oops, my system just cut on back there. Uh, but this is used more for your indoor uh, hydroponic systems. It can also be used outdoor, but it works a little better for your indoor stuff. Um, a little different when you do it this way, I'll tell you about that here also. Oops, one second, got a phone call. Okay, let's see, I got done with that, sorry about that guy. Um, where was I? Uh, I think I explained the medium so far, you also need a pair of scissors. Duh. Um, you will want to go cut your plant. Uh, once you cut your plants, you make sure if you're not going to plant them, clone them right away, stick them in some kind of water, a little bit of water jug to give them a, uh, to where they don't dry out on the end piece. When you do cut them, you want to try to cut them at an angle. Um, this one is a little wooded, it's actually gardenia that I'll be planting today, uh, but it'll definitely work. Uh, don't cut too far down, you want to leave yourself a little bit of stem. You also want to uh, pluck off any yellow spotting stems or, or leaves down the bottom. Do not try to clone something that, uh, that has a flower on it, it's just not going to work. It tries to pull too much out of it and it basically uh, strangles the entire plant. All right, well let's get started. First thing you're going to need to do is cut off your little piece. Um, I'm going to change the camera to get a little closer here, but uh, give me one sec. All right, this is actually my, um, my little cloning patch here. Um, what I've done with the first medium, with the peat moss and perlite, is just basically fill them up to the top. Uh, it does take a little while for the water to sink down, so it's good to go ahead and get a little bit moist. You do not want to soak this completely, otherwise it'll cause the it'll cause it to rot before it gets a chance to, uh, to even grow roots. So just a, just a dampness, get, get the uh, stuff a little bit moist. Um, one thing you are going to need is some kind of, of root tone or root tuning, anything that uh, allows for the root tuning. This, this is very important. Without something like this, uh, the roots won't take a hold and you've got about a one in eight chance of actually getting a root uh, off of one of your cuttings. Um, but this stuff works great. First thing we're going to do is we're going to make little holes within our, our peat moss here. Just enough, you want to do it about an inch and a half deep. Inch and a half to an inch. Uh, I'm just using a, a, a dart. All right, once you've got that done, um, this is going to be the important part here. Uh, if you're going to do something like this, you don't want it up too tall, but you're going to want to be able to get it in there just about right. Uh, when it comes down to the stem, it is cut at an angle. You probably can't see that because it's a little, it's a little small. But what we're going to do is we're going to take it and we're just going to trim a little bit of the, uh, the brown skin off. Not too much. You don't want to cut it down to the quick. If you cut it down to the quick, you might as well just start over. But you just want to take a little bit of the brown skin off on one of the sides. Um, this will allow for the root tone to take place and also the roots to grow out of that. I'm not really sure you can see that, but you can see I've shaved off one little side of it there. Um, as far as the root tone, you do want to dip it back in the water to wash it off pretty good. Uh, you do not want this too wet. Uh, if this is too wet, it will drip in your uh, uh, root tone, and that's something you do not want to happen. But as you can see, it's just barely wet. We're going to go ahead and stick it in there, swish around a little bit. You don't want to go up too high, but you do want to go up just high enough uh, to where it's going to cover the entire thing. Uh, there's a big clump on it. Don't get any clumps. Once again, try not to get anything in your root tone, otherwise it'll, it'll turn bad on you. Uh, as you can see, root tone attached. We're just going to put it right in the hole. And that's that. And believe it or not, it's actually that simple. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to repeat this process uh, multiple times. Just shaving off a little bit. Now this one I'm actually going to cut down. It's a little too big. You do want it semi-close to the, to the actual plants. You don't want the, the water to have to travel, travel too far. 
Otherwise, you're going to have issues with the rooting. And you have too much die-off before it actually grows the roots. And don't worry about a little die-off. you gotta, got to expect it a little bit. Um, as you can see, got some spotting and some yellow leaves on this one. So I'm just going to go ahead and pluck those off. No need for those. Oops, almost forgot the root tone. Once again, just enough. Knock off any excess. And right in the hole. And you don't want to pack it down in there, but you do want to cover it up to where there's not a lot of air around the hole that you created earlier. Now I'm going to do this a couple more times. Once you've got these in here, you do want to water them down just a little bit more. Once again, don't soak it too much uh, because we're going to put this in a, in a hot house. Um, very important. Uh, if you don't have a hot house, you can pretty much do anything you want that's something similar. Um, what I'm using or have used in the past is a cake tin. Uh, my wife actually got me a birthday. Oh, you know what? Phone call. One sec. All right, guys, I do apologize for that. Um, <clears throat> back to what I was talking about. Uh, this is a basic cold stone uh, cake tin, but it does work. It works exactly like a hot house. It has little grooves down there. You just put the water in it. As long as it's in the sun, the water will keep a nice humidity within it. Now, you got to keep it in there depending on which kind of plant you're actually doing. Uh, this one's going to take about two weeks because it has a little bit a little bit more woody of a surface than your, than your average plant, but it will definitely do just fine in that. Give it a little air every couple of days. Uh, make sure it always has the humidity around it. Um, as far as doing this for a hydroponic system, you're going to use something called rock wool. Uh, this stuff is excellent. Um, only issue with this is once you have them planted, just like you did here, uh, just stick them right in the holes, uh, you do have to use some kind of fertilizer or nutrient at a very, very low dosage when you're using this. Obviously, the rock wool doesn't have anything in it. So, uh, if you're growing indoors, like this over here, then you most likely already have that stuff. All right, on to the hothouse. This is basically my hothouse. This is where I, I start all of my stuff. As you can see, it, it, the water condenses down all around it, all around the top, as long as there's, there's heat. Um, putting a lamp up above it just helps it grow a little better. If you don't have what's called a heating pad, and please, please people, don't use a real heating pad. This one is made especially for this kind of stuff. Waterproof, water resistant, all of that. As you can see, what that does is that raises the temperature of my hothouse uh, about 8 to 12 degrees uh, than your, your temperature of your home or whatever you're using it in. Um, inside the hothouse. Um, you can see pretty much all the plants that I've, I've started cloning. Uh, this is a, a cheap pepper plant. Um, another pepper plant. Now this one I actually did the root tone a little bit too deep. And you can, if you can actually see it here. You can see the roots actually growing out of the stem. That was because that's where I dipped the stem at. I just, I dipped it up a little too high. Oops. Um, these are ones that I've already done. Uh, they've been in there about a week and I'd say probably another Another two weeks, they'll be fully rooted, and I can just pluck them right out through the dry phase. Um, well, basically, that's it, guys. I'm going to put our little buddies in there, put the hot house back on. It doesn't soak my whole floor first. And that's it. That is your cloning. Wait a couple weeks. Don't mess with it. Don't flick it. Don't do anything while it's trying to root. Uh, you can pretty much expect some of the leaves to start dying and turning yellow like that. That's just typical. That's normal. Uh, once again, if it's flowering, if it's doing anything, uh, don't, don't try to clone a flowering plant. All right, guys, that's it. If you have any questions, put them in my comments. Um, other than that, let me know what you think. This is SciWire.com. Check it out.